It's a busy night at the Fort Worth Convention Center. People are lining up to get a brand new bobblehead. But it isn't A-Rod, Emmett, Nash, or even Madonna they're lined up for. This one's a different spring-loaded likeness. Inside the rink, more than 10,000 on hand. Hands over hearts. Happily watching their hometown Fort Worth Brahma skate to victory over the visiting San Angelo Outlaws. If you like it. But most are here for the bobblehead, a likeness of a guy who hasn't even played pro hockey for almost five years. Team president and part owner Andy Moog. Splattering would be the first thing that comes to mind, but uh, that's kind of special. Uh, even though it's uh, Fort Worth and the Central League and rather than Dallas or Boston in the NHL, it's still flattering nonetheless. Moog himself played hockey in the Central League, two seasons in the early 80s with the Wichita Wind, being called up each year before starting a full-time career in the NHL with the Edmonton Oilers. Before the glory years of Gretzky, Messier and Coffey, there was... Uh, Walt Podubny, uh, Charlie Huddy, and... Uh, Give me a third, give me a third. Uh, Donnie Murdoch. Out of training camp in the NHL, I was sent to Wichita and uh, played uh, parts of two full seasons there in Central League and really cut my teeth on, uh, on the pro hockey experience living in Kansas. We learned a lot about professional hockey in those first two years. We had some success on the ice, but I think more importantly, we really grew up as, uh, as individuals. We were all 20 years old and just learning the game, and that was a good place to do it. Now, more than 20 years after Moog played in Wichita, the Central Hockey League has grown to teams from Indianapolis south to the Rio Grande Valley, from New Mexico east to Memphis, Tennessee. Hockey has grown by leaps and bounds in this part of the world. But as anyone with a passing familiarity with the sport will tell you, hockey players tend to be from a bit further north. As the snow flies in Calgary, Alberta, Kids take to the ice, already fully immersed in Canada's national pastime. Two thousand miles south, it's snow free. Sixty degrees Fahrenheit, bright sunny skies. Today's bus ride to San Angelo will take about five hours. A few hundred miles added to a hockey journey that for some of these players has crossed continents and spanned decades. My name is Mike McKinnon. My name is Erasmo Saltarelli. Craig Johnson. Uh, Jason Fricker. I started playing hockey when I was three years old. I started skating at probably the age of two. Basically started in the backyard rink probably like Every Canadian kid does. Most of my career has been overseas. Six years, um, Denmark, Germany, England. And you start playing like Junior B, you know, in Michigan. In I NHL and East Coast Hockey League, Central Hockey League. I did a little bit of traveling in my career. I went over to Europe for two years and played in Edinburgh, Scotland. And I went to university for four years in St. Mary's in uh, Halifax, Nova Scotia. And I ended up here. I was recruited by the Brahmas to come here. It's early afternoon, and the team sits down for the pre-game meal. The players devour a lot of pasta. The goalie's here. Okay, San Angelo will be the mushrooms here, okay? These guys are driving. They're going on net. You want him to go to the net? Yeah, the coach, the coach will be yelling from here. <laughs> the coach here. Okay, here's him. Between the dogs! Between the dogs! <laughs> Since I played hockey right from junior age, it's, it's a very tight-knit group. Uh, you know, we're all relatively 
the same age. Um, you know, ages from 21 to I think our oldest is, is 30. So within nine years, you know, just gives the older guys a, be a, a kid sometimes, and it gives the younger guys a chance to you know be adults sometimes. But we're, we're all you know, pretty much tight knit. We like to go and have fun together. And, you know, we're on the road. We do a lot of things together. As you've seen the bus trips, you know, it's kind of hard to stay away from stay away from your friends. So you do make a lot of good friends in this, in this sport. After the meal, the players will head off to their hotel for a few hours nap. What big game? <laughs> Which game? What big game? <laughs> While the players sleep, we head out to find out if tonight's game is on the minds of the people of San Angelo. We've been to a couple of the Outlaws games. They win a few, they lose a few. It's fast. Fast and very entertaining. They like hockey, but as for some of the finer points of the game... You know what icing is? No. I, I figured out, wait a minute. Oh, is that where the puck goes all the way to the end and hits the wall? Or what about icing? We do. Um, <laughs> I'm not talking about chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's stuff you throw in cake. <laughs> we meet Eileen Mercer at her shop. It's been in her family since 1923. Do you know the big game is tonight in town? Well, I understand it's soccer. <laughs> J.L. Mercer and Son are boot makers. Their customers include Tom Wopat, Mickey Gilly, and Charlie Daniels. Have you ever heard of Wayne Gretzky? Oh, yes, who hasn't? <laughs> but Eileen says so far, the great one hasn't been in to buy boots. So in this West Texas town where football is clearly king, why are people going to watch a hockey game? If you went to, say, Chicago to watch a professional hockey team, people follow that because they grow up with it. It's in the north. Uh, down here, it's kind of unique in the fact that, you know, we don't have frozen lakes and we don't have 40 degrees below and so on and so forth. So to go to a game, it's, it's, it's something different and it's something unique to West Texas, but it's a lot of fun. And I think a lot of it's because we don't know what really is going on. <laughs> Can you sing the Canadian National Anthem? No way. No. No way. I don't even Can sing you? myself in the shower. <laughs> <laughs> I know the National Anthem, Oh Canada. Can you sing it for me just a little bit, please? Let's, oh let's Canada, oh Canada. The San Angelo Coliseum opens its doors to the public well before game time. It's mostly kids on the ice, some doing pretty well out there. Others just trying to stay upright. The Brahmas get to the rink 90 minutes before game time. There's nothing wrong with giving her a double stop and just fucking going, especially on your own. I know fight confidence is an issue, but just even if you turn it over and you're wheeling with it, if you're below the tops of circles, who gives a fuck if you turn it over? A record in the last 10, fellas. We haven't lost many games in regulation with the exception, with the exception of Oklahoma City. I think we've gone seven or eight without a loss in regulation, which is pretty impressive. The team is coming off an overtime loss the night before. Coach Todd Lalonde is disappointed with the loss, but he'll take a single point that his team fights for a playoff spot. I really wanted to challenge each and every player in the locker room today to understand, not let yourself down. Don't have a lull in the action. Want yourself to get better. Bishop! What? Cheeseman! What? Lee! What? Chaput! What? Kubernet! Yeah. Cards! Yeah. Kelly! Yeah. Soup! Yeah. Russ! Yeah. Billy! Yeah. Let's go! Yeah. Come on, boys! Come on, boys! Come on, boys. They really are kind of rabid. I mean, they, they're passionate about their sports. I don't care if it's football, baseball, basketball, hockey. They, they want the home team to win. They take it very serious. And like I said, a lot of times it gets personal. Roughly 90% of the players on the ice are Canadian, but no red and white maple leaf hangs overhead here. Where's the Canadian flag? That's a good question. I wish there was. Some ranks have them, some ranks don't, so. Two women in the crowd bring one to tonight's game. They say they want the players to feel at home. Well, St. Angelo is good because uh, you notice all around town and everyone meets and greets you and treats you real well. 
So that's, that's what I like about it. So they're going to cross ways. Stand up. Not a boy. Not a boy. But the outlaws aren't showing much hospitality tonight. They go up one nothing early in the first period. Shirley. Shirley. Move it, move it, move it. San Angelo not only leads on the scoreboard, <laughs> their physical play has the Brahmas off balance, unable to get any momentum going. Jeff Bateman is playing in his first game since being sent down from the American Hockey League's Utah Grizzlies. After nearly getting it taken off, his head is now firmly in the game. Out of bird Bates! Not fucking interference! Toes up! Who's got the wide guy? Who's got the fucking wide guy? The lawn has one of the youngest teams in the CHL. One side of the ice defensively, okay? You see him toe caps up, you drift the right with the guy. Just let him go. Remember in the neutral zone, we don't stay with our guys, right? Star goalie Corey Cooper keeps the team close, and despite a few skirmishes and a parade to the visitors' penalty box, the Brahmas score a late goal to tie it up. Running around, now we look like we never played defense a day in our life, fellas. Unless we take care of business inside the fucking blue line, it's a chase game the whole period. We're not just chasing the puck the whole period. We can't lose battles. Big men on defense losing battles down low to their players down this end of the building. All right, for the guys that had shitty first period, suck it up. You got 40 more to go. It's 1-1. One, one. That's the good news. 1-1. One, one. Toes up. Toes up. The pep talk does not seem to work. Toes up. Toes up. Defenseman Daniel Villeneuve hears about it from the line. I stand right beside you. I'll take the best score. Both guys are standing up. The pivotal goal of the game comes as a lucky bounce. Paul Vincent, one of the league's biggest players, tries a fancy cross ice pass. It bounces off Mike Tilson's skate right back to Vincent. So you can't tell me, fuck, we haven't been down by two before with a fuck of a lot less time than 20 minutes, goddammit. But let's go out there now, finish all our checks, be real structured in the neutral zone off the four check. Don't try and make chicken salad out of the chicken shit. Just baby step it through. You got 20 minutes to get two and draw it even and see what happens. But goddammit, don't fucking get all work specifically down low. Forward. Forward. In the third, the team comes out with a new focus. Getting pucks on the San Angelo net and just as important to Lalonde, Truck. controlling play in their own end. So great job. Way to work. Way to work. It's a great shift out of that fucking unit down there. It's a great shift. Suddenly, Fort Worth has the outlaws on their heels. Hi, Cully! Chad Woolard is one of the Brahma's most physical players. He gets under the skin of Chris Peach, one of San Angelo's best skill players. Happy eighth birthday, The momentum of the game is now shifting. With eight minutes gone in the third period, Captain Joe Van Volsen manages to get the puck past Ronane, drawing the Brahmas within one. Not a boy, Joey. The game is now up for grabs. The fans are sitting forward in their seats. No fucking hold! Are you watching the fucking game? No fucking hold in front! But Lalonde has had enough of the officiating. Fuck your stunned play, man. There's a stunned look on your fucking face half the fucking game. Never mind talking. Watch the fucking play, Dumbo. What are you talking for? Got a hard enough time chewing gum and fucking skating. But the referee doesn't do any favors for the Brahmas. Jason Clark has three tries to tie it up. One minute remaining in the third period. But time Clark is running is, out. You're on the boards. Clark in front of the net, in front of the net, in front of the net. I want you to walk. When you're on the boards, I want you to come off with Tilly. So Tilly, you walk up. I want you to be ready. So when you walk to the net, if you got jam, if you don't have a shot, you look to him, you walk and fucking rip it though, okay? The crowd is on its feet. You want it?
team quietly boards the bus. It's going to be a long ride home to Fort Worth.